Good morning once again and uh, welcome to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, where we have a quick review of the major stories making headlines across Nigeria. we we'll would say uh, good morning to our guest, uh, Mr. Ezekiel Inyaye Talk. Thanks for joining us. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you again. Good to see good you. Good morning. Let's kick off with the Daily Independent newspapers. It uh, should be on your screen in just a few seconds. Uh, and uh, of course, we'll go through some of these major stories. It says there, despite high jet A1 price and forex scarcity, airlines crash fares. Also, Buhari defies public outcry, renominates Loretta Onoche as uh, INEC commissioner. Federal government okays 895.5 billion naira supplementary budget for military and COVID-19. Sets to borrow 722 billion naira for security expenditures. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram must register in Nigeria, says the federal government. Says um, Twitter wants to initiate talks over suspension. Courts to open Monday as Jusun suspends strike. Asup suspends 65 days old strike also. Nigeria to sell unused electricity to four countries. Secession idiotic. We have correctable problems, says the former president Tulishiko Basanjo. And APC blackmailing eminent Nigerians into joining party, says the PDP. It says the, P the ruling party has perfected plans to rig the 2023 polls. And also female teacher Dr. Jen Abuja, NLC president, explains why insecurity will persist. And lastly, senators score Ninth Assembly high in midterm assessment. And on the Daily Sun newspaper, Twitter reaches out to federal government to end impasse. Social media platforms now to register in Nigeria to operate. Reviews like Mohammed. U.S. Nigerians in diaspora call for ban reversal. Above the headline on the, above the, headline on the Daily Sun, June 12, Presidency to air documentary in honor of Abiola as 1993 elections winner. Also, rise up, provide leadership, Anglican Bishop tells Uzodimma. IPOB alleges extrajudicial killings in Southeast. Uh, Jusun as to suspend two months old strike. TB Josh's family seeks Lagos government's participation in pastor's burial. Government representative visits family. Onayeko. Salt and others call for peace and reconciliation. Federal government approves 723 billion naira loan for security. OK's 895 billion naira draft supplementary 2021 budget. Nigeria's debt rises to 33.107 trillion naira. That's according to the Debt Management Office. COVID-19, federal government issues travel advisory on Brazil and Turkey. And the passenger tells agitators, shelve calls for Nigeria's disintegration. Those are the stories on the Daily Sun. And on the Punch newspapers, NBA readies 13-member legal team, Lai Pantami, lead talks with Twitter. Will defend any Nigerian undergoing prosecution for tweeting, lawyer, uh, lawyer's body vows. And Senate keeps mom on ban. Twitter must now register with CAC, the federal government uh, says. And also National Assembly members, uh, opposition National Assembly members tell Nigerians, ignore Twitter suspension. Nigeria's total debt rises by 191 billion naira in three months. Hits 33.1 trillion naira. Abbasinjo Capet's secession agitators describes disintegration talk, uh, calls rather as idiotic. Four West African countries to buy Nigeria's idle electricity. And Buhari inaugurates Lagos Ibad on train service and security facilities today. Also on the punch this morning, uh, 13 billion Naira ECOE cash reps tackle NSA as MFLA, IGP and others appear today. Judiciary workers suspend strike, berate Erofai, Otom and Lalong. And also, Oshun plans a uh, headcount of migrants and others' headsmen's registration. Uh, pastor, herbalist, and three others arrested with human parts. Police dodge questions as suspected headsmen abduct four and rape a lady, Nikiti. 
And the last one, reps demand resignation of FIRS boss for shunning summons. That's all on the punch this morning. And moving on now to the next newspaper we see on The Nation. The headline reads, Government, Twitter, must register, pay taxes to have a chance. And social media giants gets conditioned. On the top page of The Nation newspaper, IG to policemen. <clears throat> Don't allow hoodlums take over your stations. Onaye Sultan urged Nigerians to embrace peace. Made in Nigeria phone unveiled in Abuja. Bandits, drug supplier arrested by NDLEA. Buhari represents Onoche, others for screening as INEC commissioners. Also on the Nation newspaper, NJC panel to monitor governor's compliance with judicial autonomy. Cuts reopen today as strike ends. COVID-19, it's risky traveling to India, Brazil, Turkey, says federal government. And lastly, on the Nation, Obasanjo dismisses cessation agitation. Not's group accuses ex-president of destabilization plot. All right. Um, good morning uh, to uh, Mr. Ezekiel Yanitok once again. Thanks for joining us. Yes, good morning, sir. Um, quite a packed day, I must say. So where do we start? Oh, anyway, you choose. Go ahead. Uh, um, let's look at um, the ban on Twitter. I've really taken a hard look at every single thing. And um, I think there's a thread that runs through our supposed governance systems or structures. And um, we keep debating, we keep you know, talking about these things without looking foundationally at where our problems are or where our problems emanate. The very first thing is that we have not, I've said it time and time again, we have not interrogated the, the intent, the motivation of the people in power. If I came here to look good, all I'll do is just focus on the monitor and all I'm doing, whatever I'm saying, that's not my point. I came here to look good before the public. But if I came here to communicate certain things to them, the first thing is that I'll do thorough research in what I'm, I want to say. And I, 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 as much as I want to be mindful of my appearance, I'll be more mindful of my communication to make sure that the thing that was in my mind is communicated you know, in the best possible way. That said, what is really the honest intention, drive, motivation, instigation of the people in power, starting with Mr. President. I really want to know what on the mind of Mr. President, what he understands as the, the prime responsibility of that office, and to what extent his thinking aligns with our thinking, because we could be singing from two different song sheets. And for him, he's doing well, and he's congratulating himself, and he can't understand you. And you are so upset without understanding that the man is not thinking the way you are thinking. Who is sitting down to tell Nigerians what governance is? And to that extent, the imperatives, the no-go areas, the obligations, what, what you, you want to achieve in office. That said, come to Twitter. Number one is that you must realize that the security and welfare of the people is the primary purpose of government. Chapter 2, Section 14, Subsection 2B, I'm quoting verbatim what the Constitution says. The security and welfare of the people is the primary purpose of government. Number two. When you talk in terms of national security, exactly what constitutes national security? Is it the welfare and security of the people in power or the welfare and security of the generality of Nigerians? That said, what should anger people in government more? The private ego of Mr. President or the employment generation or the lack of it of the generality of the youth of this country to whom the present belongs. 
When we interrogate that, then we'll know the action we should take. Should an action be taken against Twitter? Yes. To what extent and how should that be? So that the young people are not disenfranchised and national security is not compromised. Who is sitting down to do that? The only person that can do that is a man that has something between his ears. It's called cerebral governance. Is that what we run today? No. If you're intelligent, you're a threat to government. I think the time has come when we, the people, we, the elite, must provide direction as the way to go in leadership recruitment in this country. Outside well, okay. of that, we'll continue so, to debate policies that just don't make sense. So, Mr. Yeye, I talk, the, the, the president is now saying for Twitter to continue to operate, they would need to be duly registered. They would need to pay taxes. They would need to operate under certain laws. Do you think this is a way to go, or this would just further stifle free, free speech, you know, online? You know, you know, you know, it brings me back to where I started from, which is, don't we have intelligent people who understand processes to presidency making a pronouncement? For instance, somebody should ask this question. How do we bring Twitter in as an entity within the system? Is it possible? what is the mode and the modality of because before you pay tax you must be a registered entity now when we look at twitter is it a registered is it a regulatable entity or what is the best global practices what are the, the what can nigeria do differently that other countries can borrow a leaf from can we you know this knee-jerk approach to things this is not start, are we saying that all this problem is because Twitter deleted a tweet. Are we telling me that the Minister of Finance does not think in terms of revenue generation right from her first day in office, looking at all the different places and putting in place systems such that even Twitter will be the one begging you to come in because we have a veritable alternative uh, which is going to give them a run for money. And as business people, they would want to you know, as you were doing your analysis, I heard of, you know, the young people who are developing something about the, 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 the taxes or the caps, and people want to buy it. Now, these young people are on their own. They've done this. To what extent is there a muscle of government that can protect them to ensure that that, that interface with others is not taken up? At the same time, could government have been strategic in knowing that this is where the young people are, this is a risk possibly, we have a national security advisor, and as a result, long before today, they had been cooking up something, and they don't even seem to be fighting Twitter, they are seeming to provide an alternative, and Twitter will be the one coming begging them, and they will give Twitter preconditions, right. and they will still make the money. Why can't people have thinking in government? All right, Mr. Ayato, just, let's move to something yeah. else. Uh, let's move to uh, the story. I think it makes the papers um, across. Um, talking about African countries buying Nigeria's idle electricity. I, I, I saw that as well. And I'm just, I'm just, I really, I, I love Nigeria. I love this country. It's good to know that when we are looking for power, we have idle power. So much so that we don't even know what to do with them. Our power generation is so much that we even want to sell to other countries. This is ridiculous. This is absurd. This is preposterous. I don't know the words to use that Nigeria has idle electricity. And if you listen well, you hear the sound of my generator. And I've been on it since yesterday. And my country, please, can they tell me where it is? Let me go and collect some. I will even pay them and collect some. So I can have electricity that Nigeria wants to sell to four other African countries. Why? Because they cannot evacuate. What does it take to evacuate power? What is national security and what is national priority? Bros, this question must be answered. Hmm. Okay, another question we need to answer is, um, which way forward? We know Jusin eventually have called off their strike, Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria, fighting for a while now, since April, uh, for judicial autonomy. You know, they say that the Nigeria Governors Forum 
and the MOU had, you know, had not been signed, but they're saying now that courts will be open, just in a suspended strike. But the question still remains about, has the, that memo been signed? Has judicial autonomy really been granted? Because we know many cases where, you know, strikes, <clears throat> strikes hold for a certain cause, you know, that cause is never addressed, but the strike is called off. So are we likely to see yet another strike in future? Or do you think this is, this is a great thing to see that the courts will be reopening soon? No, it's a window to open so that we can attack this Twitter ban matter. When, they, okay. when we finish and get to a logical conclusion, we'll go back to, because what's fair is fair, what's right is right, what must be done must be done. So I really hail them for opening so that we can enter courts more. Maybe we try this Twitter thing because one of the um, main stations had said that they are waiting for the courts to open. And then we are also waiting for the attorney general to take the legislators and um, the big men to court. And then let's see the, you know, the, the minister of justice say, don't worry, when we reach court, you know the, the, the law that we are trying you on. That is so gross. And that is so, so disingenuous. My own attorney general, my minister of justice, the man that holds my justice in his hand, He's telling me, I don't need to tell you what I'm doing. When we get to court, I will tell you what I'm doing. That is just so, it's enough to infuriate Mr. President to call him and say, what are you talking about? Why don't you let the people know the law so they don't break the law? Why do you want to take them to court? And when you get them to court, because they were thinking that the court will never open. You see, these court people, I hail them. Let them open so that first, the, 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 the media house will try their power. And second, let the minister carry us. And finally, on this matter, the minority, uh, the, the, the opposition parties in the National Assembly, they shouldn't just say, ignore Twitter. All of them should activate their Twitter ban and say, federal government, take us first as representative of the people. Don't just tell the people, hey, don't ignore them. No, 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 don't say so. Activate all your Twitter handles and say, Minister, start with us. Take all of us in National Assembly to all right. court. All right, so Ms. That we <laughs> Ms. Talk, still, still talking about strikes. You know that the Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics, ASUP, have also suspended their strike. Um, this, basically, the federal government is now saying they're giving them a 15 uh, billion naira uh, for revitalization of the public university and uh, public polytechnics. Um, any thoughts on that before we wrap up, please? Okay. Um, as far as quickly, I want to thank them for calling off the strike. My heart has always been with the young people, and it's a sacrifice they are making. I want to appeal to government. All the time you vote money for, for COVID, you vote money for military, you vote, please, please take education as a more serious national um, uh, security concern than COVID and than the military. The military protects the people. The people, the core of the people is the youth. The essence and the making of the youth is education. Just think along that line, foundationally put education as a major national security question. And once you address that, please spare nothing. Leave no stone unturned to get the educational system working. Okay. And I will thank you for it very seriously. And All we right. thank you too for joining us on The Breakfast this morning, Mr. A. Talk, Public Affairs Analyst. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Sam here. Good morning. Stay with us. Uh, we're going to short break. When we come back, we're going into history. Uh, and of course, I'm telling you what, what happened at this uh, day, the 10th of June. I'm going back to the year 1967. Mm. And I'm going to 1980 in South Africa.